Welcome to your 13th tutorial on discrete math 2 and this is the first example for inclusion exclusion exclusion principle. So in how many ways can three identical letters A, three identical uh, letters B and three identical letters O be arranged so that no three consecutive letters of the same kind appear? So you cannot have a Right, so you cannot have A, 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 B, C, B, C, B, C, or B, B, C, C, A, A, and so, so and then here you have an A. So you cannot have three consecutive letters. Alright, so what we want is, so first thing we have to set up the problem. So let C1, C2, and C3. Okay, so what they want is no consecutive letters. What we're going to let our C's be, that they are consecutive letters. So the C is usually the opposite of what you're being asked. So let's see 1, C2, C3 be the case or cases where um, three consecutive three consecutive A's appear and then B um, sorry three consecutive B's appear B's and three consecutive O's okay respectively so respectively alright so all this is saying is that C1 you can have three consecutive A's appear C2 is three consecutive B's and C3 is three consecutive O's. Okay, so what we're trying to find is N, C1, C2, C3, all of them not. So we're trying to find the case where all these are false, so no consecutive A's appear, no consecutive B's, and no consecutive C's or O's. All right. So now we have set up our C. So let's get started. So the total sample space. So you have the sample space, which is usually usually denoted by S0. It's just the case where you don't really care how the letters appear. Just all of them have to be there. And your S0 is equal to 9 factorial. So there are, there are 9 letters they need to arrange divided by 3 factorial times 3 factorial times 3 factorial. Okay, for each of these, you're getting, um, since there are 3 identical A's, you're dividing by 3 factorial. There are 3 identical B's, you're dividing by 3 factorial, and there are 3 identical O's, so you're dividing, dividing by 3 factorial. Now, if you go to a couple of videos back, um, we were talking about permutations with repetition, and... I, I explained all of this there, like how to arrange a, a word. So if you don't know that, um, I'll post a link up, up there. Alright, so that's the number of ways to rearrange the word and not caring about the order. And now we have our S1, which is equal to N C1. And here we're going to have the case where you have three consecutive A's. So you must have three consecutive A's. Alright, so imagine this. You have the word A, 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 B, C, B, B, C, C. Alright, so here you have three consecutive A's. Now to ensure that you must have three consecutive A's, treat this as a letter X. So the, the three A's are one letter. So call it X. So you have X, B, C, B, B, C, C. And in total, 
you have seven letters here you have seven letters so your NCI is equal to or NC1 is equal to 7 factorial divided by you have three identical B's and three identical C's so you divide by 3 factorial twice alright so this is the case where um, one of them appear alright so let's generalize it so that any letter can appear so either A's or B's or C's so in total your S1 is equal to 3 choose 1 since you have three choices you have A's B's and, and O's and then that, that will be multiplied by 7 factorial divided by 3 factorial and 3 factorial and this 3 choose 1 is just the the number of ways you can pick um, a letter so it's either C1 or C2 or C3 so either C1 so A's or C2 which is B's or C3 which is O's alright so that's your S1 then you got S2 and S2 is the case where you have two letters that are identical um, sorry two letters that come in consecutive so you have A A A B B B and let's have like a C in between and then C C so A A A C or O B B B O O alright so same thing treat this as X treat this as Y then you have X, C, or O, Y, O, O. And in total you have five letters. So one, two, three, four, five. So five. And that will give you five factorial divided by three factorial. Because there are there are only three O's. And likewise, the last time, this will be multiplied by three choose two. Because now you're trying to to choose two objects out of the three. So you're trying to take any two letters. And that covers all the combinations. All right. So now we have our S1 and our S2. And the last case is where you pick all three of them. So S3 is equal to just three factorial because you have A A A B B B and C C or O O O. And that is just one case. So here it is X. These are Y and these are Z so just 3 factorial alright and the total number of ways to calculate N C1, C2, C3 all knots so the case where no consecutive A's, no consecutive B's and no consecutive C's that will be equal to S0 plus S, sorry minus S1 so minus S1 plus s2 minus s3 and the last ex the last video explained um, the whole principle this is an example and we have here s0 is equal to the whole sample space so the whole sample space so 9 factorial times 3 factorial uh, sorry divided by 3 factorial times 3 factorial times 3 factorial so you have 9 factorial divided by 3 factorial, 3 factorial, and 3 factorial minus S1, which is 7 factorial divided by 3 factorial and 3 factorial and there is 3 choose 1 so 3 choose 1 times 7 factorial divided by 3 factorial, 3 factorial plus um, the last case, uh, sorry, S2, which is 3 choose 2 times 5 factorial over 3 factorial. So here you have 3 choose 2 times 5, 5 factorial divided by 3 factorial. And last you have 3 factorial, which is S3. Here you have 3 factorial. And if you calculate all of that, that should give you the number of ways of not having 3 consecutive A's, 3, um, sorry, 3 A's, 3 B's, and 3 C's being consecutive. Alright, this was the first example. Um, there's another example after this video to um, further demonstrate um, the principle. I hope this video made some sense. Please don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next